So now comes the actual really exciting part of, of seeing how we can create a session for our user and, and make sure our, our, our application knows and recognizes that the user is in fact logged in. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, we use the, we, we implement this functionality using cookies. Okay. What are cookies? Cookies are bits of information. We can send the, the user's browser. So the user's browsers can, can store this information. And this information will hold that the user is actually logged in. So whenever we receive a request, the browser always sends us all of the cookies it has for our domain name. And, and this way we are able to, to grab all this information that the browser is sending us about the, 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 uh, the cookies our user may have. And we can search for a given cookie. So let's say the, the cookie that we know that logs in our user. And if the cookie is there, and if the value inside of that cookie is correct, we can go ahead and log the user in and give it access to some certain parts of our application that wouldn't be accessible by a user that isn't logged in. So let's see what cookies are. Here I am in my Twitter account. I'm logged in. And here I have a extension. By the way, I really recommend you, you download this extension. It's called Edit This Cookie. And I'm logged in, obviously. So I can see that I have way a lot of a lot of cookies here. Okay, a lot of cookies. And I don't actually know which one is the one responsible for logging me in, but I don't really care. What I want to show is if I delete all of the cookies. So you see, I've just deleted the cookies. See, um, Twitter has even, you know, refreshed the website for me and it, it has logged me out immediately. Okay, so I can log back in. And I see that my cookies are, are set again. So again, I'll delete them. It may take a while, but then anyway, I'm just going to hit enter and then see I'm, I'm logged out again. Okay, so how do we set cookies? Well, let's just go ahead and, and temporarily uh, set some cookies here in the login user. So whenever a user accesses the login page, we're going to send some cookies just to demonstrate um, how we actually implement them and what we need to consider in order to make the cookies safe or somewhat safe. Okay. Because also, I mean, sessions are also a very delicate topic. So we need to care about safety here and we, we, we will learn about the basics of securing cookies. Although if you are really going to deploy a real life um, production application with sessions, and for the time being, it may be enough security, but if your application gets popular, I really recommend you dive in deeper on how to secure sessions in, in web applications. Okay, so like I said, cookies are passed in headers. So we can say self.response headers dot add header. And here we need to say which header it is. So the header responsible for setting cookies is set cookie. Okay. And then we need to provide the, the value of this header. So the way we set cookies is we're going to say the cookie name is equal to the cookie value. And then we need to provide an extra parameter, which is the path. So I like to do this the following. So percent %s is equal to percent %s. And then we will substitute this percent %s with the cookie name and this percent %s with a cookie value. So then space will actually semicolon space path is equal to forward slash. So path is for any given path in our application. So now we need to substitute both of these percent s's. So the way we do this is after the string, we, we type in a percent sign, open parentheses, and we need to provide two values. The first value will, will substitute this percent s and the second value will substitute this percent s. So let's say the name of the cookie is logged underscore in and the value of the cookie is true. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to go to the login page and let's see if our cookie is here. So we see our cookies here, logged in, true. Okay, we have our cookie. So now let's go ahead and, and comment this line out and see what happens. I'm going to refresh and we're going to see our cookie our cookies still here. So this is why it's useful to use cookies for logging in because the cookies persist during the, the time that we want them to persist as we navigate through the website. And here actually we see that the default expiration date is one year from now. Okay. So I didn't define, I could define the expiration date, but I didn't. So Chrome went ahead and applied the default expiration date one year from now. So the next thing we can do is we can read the cookie. So self.request because the, the incoming request 
may or may not have cookies, but in this case it will have because we have just added one or created one. And there's a handy method for, for reading cookies, which is dot cookies. And we can just call the get and the cookie name was logged in. Okay, so we can actually print this out. See if we, we receive it in our in our console. So I refresh here, go to my console, and we see it's true that, because that's the value of the cookie. So we are receiving, we are reading cookies. And I can say if this cookie is equal to true, then I'll print out user is logged in. Okay, else. I'll print out user is not logged in. Okay, so this will print out user is logged in, in in our case. So let's refresh again, go to our here, and we see user log logged in. Okay, why do I do this? Well, I'm going to demonstrate the point why this is not too secure. I'm going to delete my cookie, refresh, and obviously user is not logged in now. Okay, so how can we hack this? How can we log in without actually providing a username and a password? Well, I can go ahead and create the cookie. So I'm going to open up my console and say document.cookie is equal to the name of the cookie. So logged underscore in is equal to the value. So true colon path is equal to forward slash. Okay, so now I've created the cookie. Let's see if I have it. I have it here. And if I refresh, all of a sudden I'm logged in again. So you see, this is not too safe. So instead of instead of us passing in the, the, the true or false, we're going to be saving here the user ID so we know which user is logged in. So I mean imagine this was any any old any old user ID, okay? And the test will be so if this this cookie exists we are logged in. Okay, so so potentially what I could do here is I could spoof the cookie, right? I could just, you know, if I found out a user's a user ID of some other user, I could, you know, just just create this cookie myself and I'd be logged into into his or her account. So this is not too secure. So the way we need to secure the cookies is we need to sign them. We need to sign them with some kind of, you know, encrypted message, which we can check or which our server can check. So we can validate whether the value of the cookie is correct or not. Okay. So whether this is legitimate or not. And the way this will work is very similar to when we hash passwords. So we will actually go ahead and grab this value and hash it together with some kind of secret string only we know. So if the hash of what we get in the cookie matches to, to the hash with our secret string, then we will know that this cookie is legitimate. If it doesn't match, we know that the cookie has been faked and we can, you know, delete this cookie and, and log the user out and throw them back to the login screen. OK, OK, so let's see how we do this. I'm going to delete the cookie for the time being. And I'm going to delete all these lines of code. 